Fantastic. Hey, listen, today, today I just, you know, this is a different, everything's different. And I, I think, I thank the Lord for DJ and his team for just coming up with just a, just a, just a way to start and just a way to inform you this year. You know, we just couldn't bring missionaries home. We couldn't do things. So we tried to do some videos and do some other things to share with you. But I, we just wanted today to be very simple. Um, I, uh, what I'm going to share with you today is, uh, is, is, is just why we do what we do. <clears throat> and it's really not complicated. And so uh, I'll just take the next few minutes just to kind of give you just a foundational, you know, we just don't do these things because I think they're best or DJ or maybe some of you think, well, this is, this is good. This is what we ought to do. In fact, churches get in trouble when they set their own direction. Why? Because the scriptures have already set the direction for us. And uh, staying on task is what, is what keeps us being who God's called us to be. And, and not staying on task with what I think or what you think. And it's, it's what the scripture teaches us. And so I just wanted just to, <clears throat> just to simply share with you today uh, who we are as, as believers, as, as his church here at Indian Rocks, Indian Rocks and, and, and what he's called us to, the mission that he's called us to. You know, this whole mission thing, missionary, you know, uh, and, and I get it because when we, usually when you think of the word missionary, really the word missionary just means one who's on a mission. So in reality, the term applies to everyone who is a believer, a true believer. You, you have a task that has been entrusted to you. You'll see it. I'll cover it here in the scriptures. And it's a task that we are to do together, right? And it may look different across the board, but the, but the underlying principle is the same. It's foundational. So I always like to say what God's called us to do is not complicated. Doesn't mean it's easy, but it's not complicated to understand. So let's just, let me just walk through you. We're going to do just answer the questions, right? The uh, the what and the who and the where and those type things. But f first is just the what, right? Just the what. And again, <clears throat> what I'm, what I want to share with you today, is 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 foundational, is basic. You know, the gospel. I love sharing God's word so that everybody can understand and grow. But there is a task, right, that we have been entrusted with, and and it's not just me that's been entrusted with it. It's all of us, right? You'll see it in just a minute. All right, but remember the word missionary, right? Remember the thought, being on mission, being on task, doing what we're supposed to do, right? And remember that missions can happen across the street, which you've seen already. <clears throat> it's not just something that happens around the world, all right? Good. So number one is what? Basically, the what is, is, is the gospel, right? That is, that is what you and I are to be about, what the scripture says. That is, that is the difference has been made in our life. We, I talk about it, <clears throat> about who Christ is and what he came to do. Um, kind of, kind of, that is the message of the gospel. That is the difference that is made in our lives. And that the, <clears throat> and that the task basically is sharing that message with other people. Uh, across the street and around the world. That is, that is a task, that is the task that has been entrusted to us. And it's not what I think, right? It's not what the different denominations think, it's what the scriptures teach us, and I'll share it with you in just a minute. But take a look, if you will, if you just look at the screens, uh, at Titus chapter two, verse 11, it says this, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. So God's grace, that is a gift you don't deserve, it's not about following religious rules, all those things. That's what this little verse in Titus is all about. It's a really cool verse. And it just says basically that God's grace, uh, it's, it's been made aware. It's been, the word appeared means it's been revealed. And it was in, in who Christ is, what he came to do. And it brings salvation. And, and then it gives you the scope. Is that this gift, this God's gift, it is for everybody, right? This comes in the definition of the word all. Right, that means everybody, right? Again, just simplicity, I know I'm being overly simplistic, but again, I think that the major parts of, of what it means to be a believer are in the simplistic. Because if they were extremely complicated, then only smart people could follow Christ. Seriously, you ever thought about that? But no, it's simple so that everybody has the opportunity to follow him if they want to. Right? So again, I just like to share with you the simplistic. That is, anyway, it's God's grace, <clears throat> it's salvation, 
right? And it's for all people. And that for those of us who are his, it trains us, right? He trains us to renounce, that is saying no to unlike godliness. And then what the wor- rest of our world run after, that's worldly passions, right? What does the rest of our world think, boy, if I had that, my life would be better, all right? Uh, that really doesn't apply to us, right? Because we're not looking to those things to come through for us, all right? Okay, I gotta get back on script here. All right, if you get me off script, we're here longer than we should be, all right? But let's keep going. And to live self-controlled, Basically, I'm not out of control, right? These things don't dictate to me, I dictate to them. It's pretty cool stuff. We'll have to come back to it one time, all right? Uh, upright, godly lives in the, in the age that you're living in. Waiting on, on Christ, right, the blessed hope, and appearing in, in glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself uh, for us to redeem us from all you know, lawlessness to purity for himself, and a people <clears throat> for his own possession who are who are passionate or who, who want to, who are driven to do good things to people around them, right? If you're following around me, well, w- with me. So then where does the drive come from to do these good things in his name? Well, I found out this, it doesn't come from me. I can tell you about it. Right? I can tell you about it. I can tell you it's what the scripture says. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this. To do what he's called us to do, it, it has to come from inside you. And the way that it comes from inside you is because he is within. Boy, for those of you who have ears to hear, this is going to help. All right? So number two is the who. Who does this task? Who are missionaries? Basically, it's all of it. We know, I know it's for it's all people. Take a look at this Corinthians. I, in fact, there aren't many weeks, and I know I repeat this verse over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. I'm gonna do it one more time today, right? But I'm gonna do the next verse, and I want you to see it, right? Therefore, <clears throat> if anyone's in Christ, right? He is a new creation. Therefore, when you put your faith and trust in Christ, he makes a difference in inside. So it's from within out. It's not someone just trying to do good works in order to make them good. It's doing what he's called us to do because that's what he's doing for us on the inside. It's really cool when you think about it. So if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. The old's passed away, the new's come. And all this comes from God, all right? This this doesn't originate with you, right? All right, who through Christ, because of what Christ did, who Christ is, and then what he did, he reconciled us to God. That is, we became his. And look at this. And he has given to us. Who's the us there? That is those who are new creations. He has given to us this ministry of reconciliation. That is telling people that they can be right with God because of what Christ did for them. And that those who put their faith and trust in him, all right, then they'll become his own. That message has been entrusted to us. So to do these things, you know, I don't have to manipulate people to do them, right? I don't have to, I don't have to lead a cheer section. I don't have to give a Newt Rockney speech. I don't have to, no, sometimes those things help. I'm not against those. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. If it doesn't come from you, you won't do it very long, right? If he's not there, you'll get discouraged, I promise. But if he's the one driving you to do these things, you'll be able to overcome more things than you can imagine, right? It's, again, I just like for you to see it. Therefore, those, then, those who are missionaries are those who are doing God's task. And guys, that comes in all shapes and sizes. We've already seen it today, right? Uh, Dr. Jonathan, right? That, by, by the way, Jonathan and Jess, John and Jess, they were our next door neighbors for years. And, and they have four children. In fact, they, have, they just had a little girl. They had three boys. And it was so funny, Martha and I, right? We'd look out the, out the, out the window at them next year, bless their hearts. And reminded of us, of our own family, yo, yo. And, I, and we'd say, hey, hon, is that, was it that crazy for us? Oh yeah, yeah, it was. But anyway, but Jonathan and Jessica, both are doctors. 
So their heartbeats are how God can use how God's gifted them to make a difference in someone else's life because it's different for you, unless you're a doctor. It's gonna come in a different shape. For me, I've been given so much education through the years. That's why I love serving national pastors and being able, and that's what the Thrift Center does. You saw the video earlier. I love doing those things because I'm giving something to these people. Some of them are in real dangerous areas. I'm giving them some, some tools and skills and, and it's a thrill to me. But, but what God's given me a passion for is not necessarily what he's gonna give you a passion for, but the foundation of it at all is so that Christ will be known so that the gospel will be heard, whether it's across the street or around the world, that is our task. But it's gonna look different with as many peop different people that are in the room and with as many people who are watching at home. I'm gonna be so glad when this COVID thing is behind us, right? And I'm just hoping they're not gonna keep it alive, right? If y'all know what I'm talking about. But I'm off script again, all right? So, <laughs> so this is the, the real simplistic passion and the big thing that you have to overcome, but all of us have to overcome this if we're believers. It's almost impossible to overcome if you're not a believer. The biggest thing to overcome is that you live in a culture that really pretty much tells you daily, hourly really, that the most important things in your life need to be self-centered, right? You have to look about for you and what makes you happy and all the rest. And then we find out being a believer that it's not about us, right? It's about others, it's about him, right? And so, so one of the great fights in, in believers in our country is that, is that, believe it or not, you are the who, right? You are the who, because it's been committed to all of us, but it looks pretty different, doesn't it? It looks pretty different from every, everyone who's, you know, helping, helping kids, orphanage, you know, that, that you have the whole kid thing, over here, all the way over to, to, to our, our Pakistan folks who are, who are feeding hungry, right? Hungry elementary school kids to, I mean, to our stitchers, to the, the K-9, right? Every, every, it's just this is wide variety, but the foundation is the same, is that we wanna share Christ's love with people, right? Why? Because it's, who he's, it's what he's called us to do. If that's what we do, then we are on task, right? If we start getting off into all these other things, that's why people say, well, I think the church ought to be doing, you know, I don't wanna be ugly, but I really don't care what you think or what I think. The scriptures are real clear who we're supposed to be and what our task is supposed to be. But I do promise you this, if the church doesn't do this, nobody else will, right? Letting people know the gospel. What is the gospel message? And not just trying to do good things, but understanding that the reason we do them is because of the difference he's made in our lives. Anyway, okay, I gotta get back on script. All right, so, so understanding then the who, it's us, right? Number three is the where. Pretty much everywhere we're led. And it's, it's a spirit-led thing. That's in Acts chapter one, verse eight. In original, it says, but then you will receive right power when God's spirit comes upon you. This was the early days. And God's spirit empowered them to do this task, even when they faced threats of their own lives, right? But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you and you'll be my witnesses. That is, you're gonna share the gospel message. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and eventually you're gonna go to the ends of the earth, right? So really it takes all shapes and sizes across the street, right? <clears throat> That's why we say across the street and around the world, but it's all missions. It's all the same concept. It's all the same direction. And different people have passions for different things. You know, a whole bunch of you, your, your focus is on your immediate community, but there's a lot of you that are real passionate about different countries and and that really need to hear the gospel for the first time. It's incredible to watch the differences. Just make sure you don't judge another one, right? That can, get, that can cause problems, right? Because God's gonna give, give every, every person, it's gonna be different, it's, but that's the way it should be, right? 
the passion of, of making sure the gospel share. Number four, this is where I'll close, is how. Uh, how do we carry this out? You know, and in our kind of, you know, we try to use phrases so people can understand. And, and you, you know, I should probably share this more often, but, but in our kind of missions, you know, jargon, I think we, what we use, we use, the, we use the term living scent. And it's kind of like one of those things, you know, uh, living scent. What does that mean? Well, it means that you've been sent with the task and we need to live like we were, like in living up to our mandate, our mission, right? And, and again, you'll see it in the scriptures. It's real straightforward. Let's take a look at it and then I'll be done, all right? John chapter 20, verse 21. Jesus said to them again, peace be to you, all right? As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Now, let me explain Romans, which is similar, chapter 10, verse 14. Now, because in 13, it says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then verse 14, it says, well, how can you call on him, right, if you haven't believed? And how can you have a chance to believe if you've never heard? Right, you hear what he's saying, Paul is saying here? And, and how are they gonna hear unless, unless someone's preaching? And, and that, that translation preaching is unfortunate because when you think of preaching, you think about what I'm doing now. But the, actually, the, the actual word preaching there is the, is the word for herald. It's just basically to share news with people. That is to let people know. And so unless somebody shares it, nobody's going to hear it. And then basically it says, and how, how are they gonna hear unless somebody is sent? So living sent. That is, as a believer, living in such a way to fulfill the task that has been trusted to you, which we've already talked about, it's the ministry of reconciliation. Basically, it's just sharing the good news of Christ with, with other people in all kinds of different creative ways. It's an amazing thing when you think about it. It's not complicated, but it's not always easy, right? And it goes on to say that how beautiful are the feet that do those things, right? And so our simple formula is this. There's three ways you can be a part and they're not hard, right? The first and most important, right, by far, is to pray. Always has been, guys. I found out that whatever you pray about, God gives you a heart for. It's just incredible. Um, so the first thing you should do before you do anything else is pray. Because where your heart goes, that's where everything else goes. And prayer seems to seem, I don't know about y'all, but prayer seems to direct your heart. Um, so that's the first thing you could do. Number two, you can give. You can give. Giving is, is extremely important. You've already seen this morning the impact that giving can make. It's like I was telling you, you know, there was especially that group of pastors that I did a pastor's conference that they're in, all I can say is North, North Africa. And those are some of the most amazing guys you've ever met. And we brought them to this little hotel and you know, there's just, there seems to be 50 or 60 of them, but, but I mean, giving, the giving or the, really the thrift center paid for all those pastors to be there, right? So giving has an impact. And, and I'll just go ahead and tell you guys, um, this is a giving place. The place that you attend church is a giving place. Um, well over a million dollars every year for as long as I've been here. In fact, even this past year, with all of this COVID stuff, guys, our, our giving to mission has gone up. I mean, go figure that one out. And so this is a giving place. So I'm, I'm not here to, yeah, praise the Lord, yeah. I'm not here to, I'm not here to coax you or to, or, to, or to manipulate or anything like that. You're already doing that. And DJ will come up in just a minute and tell us if you, if you would like to be more part of that. But the last one is to go. And this is the one I want us to be a part of. Um, passions, where, where do they lie? Because there's whole groups of people that perhaps God can reach through you that, that you, you, you'll never get them to church. You'll never get them here or there, but I, I don't know. It's just interesting to watch. But those are the three ways, right? To pray, to give, and then to go. And, uh, and when I say go, I don't mean that you're gonna wind up in Africa somewhere. 
For you, it could be volunteering, you know, you know, to help traffic children. I don't know what it looks like for you. I have no idea. I'm not even gonna tell you what I think you ought to do. But if you pray, God will reveal, hey, I want you to be a part of this. And it may not be something dramatic or huge, but it's all part of us being a light, which is sharing the gospel light with people. It's, it's incredible. So today we just wanted to be simplistic, extremely simplistic. Just share with you who we are, what we're doing, and what we're going to continue to do. This COVID thing has kind of put a pause on a whole lot of things. We get that. But we want to continue to be who God's called us to be, even in the situation, whatever the situation that we're in. But God bless you. Thank you for your faithfulness. But continue to pray how God will call you uh, to be a part, uh, continued part of what he's doing through, through our church here uh, in Indian Rocks. Let me pray for you, and then DJ is going to close our service. Lord, thank you so much for the day. God, I pray for, for this church, your church here at Indian Rocks. Continue to guide us, lead us, and uh, we'll follow. Lord, let us be faithful to the, to the mission that you've given to us. And, uh, and God, we're gonna give you the glory for it all. And Lord, pray this in Jesus' name, amen.